Hello my fellow engineers, today we will see the history of the Yak-141 or as my uncle says the granddaddy of the F-35. In this documentary, we will explore the remarkable and iconic Yakovlev-141, a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft developed by the Soviet Union. Prepare to be amazed by the story of innovation, engineering, and the rise and fall of this incredible machine. To understand the significance of the Yak-141, we must first set back into the height of the Cold War. The world was divided into two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, each pushing the boundaries of technology and aviation. It was a time of intense rivalry, and the need for advanced military aircraft was paramount. The Soviets needed an aircraft for air superiority in order to compete with the United States and its allies. The Soviet aircraft manufacturer Yakovlev was given the task to create such a unique aircraft, and so it embarked on a mission to create an aircraft that could take off and land vertically, a task that was nothing short of extraordinary. The result of their efforts was the Yak-141, a masterpiece of engineering and design. Although they built only four aircrafts, it really showed what people can achieve, no matter the side you are on, Uncle Sam or, or the Soviet's comrades. At the heart of the Yak-141's capabilities was its pioneering vertical takeoff technology. Using a system of rotating nozzles, the aircraft could lift off vertically like a helicopter and then transition to conventional flight. The aircraft was equipped with a single engine because a two-engine solution was too dangerous in case one engine cut off during vertical landing. This groundbreaking innovation made the Yak-141 one of the most versatile aircraft of its time. It was made with the idea of being used as a by both the military and naval forces. It was truly built as a do-it-all aircraft in mind, you know a Tom Brady of the Air Force. The Yak-141's maiden flight was a sight to behold. It demonstrated its ability to take off vertically, leaving onlookers in awe. The aircraft's vertical takeoff capabilities meant it could operate from short and improvised runways, adding to its tactical advantage. It could be very useful for the Navy, as we all know the runway on an aircraft carrier is short, and also the Soviet's ones don't have a catapult for the aircraft. But the Yak-141 wasn't just about vertical takeoff, it also incorporated steel features, a testament to the Soviet Union's commitment to staying at the forefront of military technology. These features made the aircraft more challenging to detect by enemy radar. Also, the plane's engine was made of titanium materials in the parts of extensive heat. That was also a reason why the aircraft wasn't allowed to hover more than two and a half minutes, and no less than 26% of the overall aircraft was to be manufactured of graphite or composite material. The Yak-141 underwent rigorous testing, showcasing its impressive maneuverability and vertical landing capabilities. The aircraft's agility was unmatched, setting new standards for military aviation. It was equipped with the engine R79V300, a two-shaft augmented turbofan with a bypass ratio of 1. Maximum thrust was 14,000 kg. The rear nozzle could rotate from 0 degrees to 95 degrees for vertical takeoff, landing, and hovering. The two lift engines were the RD-41 design, a simple single-shaft engine made mostly of titanium. Each had a thrust of 4,100 kg. The engines were installed behind the cockpit at an angle of 85 degrees. The aircraft even was equipped with an ejection seat that was automatically armed as soon as the engine duct was rotated past 30 degrees with an airspeed of less than 300 km per hour. It really showed the importance of keeping the pilot safe. Little spoiler, in Soviet Union, it was not a priority. The Yak-141 was armed with air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, making it a formidable combat machine. The production version was to have been fitted with an extensive avionics and weapons suite, including Doppler radar, laser TV ranging and aiming, as well as a heads-up multifunction display which worked in connection with a helmet-mounted missile aiming system as found on the MiG-29. This system allows the pilot to lock onto an enemy aircraft by turning his head as far as 80 degrees from front. Its ability to take off and land on a dime allowed it to be deployed from various platforms, including aircraft carriers, increasing its strategic value. However, as the Cold War drew to a close, so did the need for such an advanced vertical takeoff fighter. 
the changing geopolitical landscape and economic pressures led to the eventual discontinuation of the Yak-141 program. With the collapse of Soviet Union and economic decline, there wasn't enough resources to continue the program. Some experts say it could really have an air dominance over that era aircraft. The aircraft never entered full-scale production. Today, the Yak-141 is a symbol of a bygone era, a time when innovation knew no bounds. Some examples of this remarkable aircraft are preserved in museums, reminding us of the heights that aviation technology can reach. We could really see that with a great will and limited restrictions the human mind can go to extreme lengths for achieving something really extraordinary. We spoke with aviation experts who shed light on the Yak-141's legacy. They explained its impact on the development of vertical takeoff technology and its enduring influence on modern aircraft, one of them being the iconic F-35B variant. If you look closely, you can see that it uses similar technology of the rotating rear nozzle of the engine in order to being able to take a vertical. While the Yak-141 program may have been short-lived, its legacy lives on. Many of the concepts and technologies developed for this aircraft have found their way into modern military aviation, including the famous F-35 Lightning II. Following the announcement that the Yakovlev company could no longer fund the project, it entered in partnership with Lockheed Martin that at the time was developing the X-35 for U.S. military. The spirit of innovation that drove the creation of the Yak-141 continues to inspire engineers and designers worldwide. Today's vertical takeoff and landing aircraft owe a debt of gratitude to the groundbreaking work done by the Soviet engineers behind the Yak-141. The Yakovlev Yak-141, a marvel of aviation engineering, may have faded into history, but its legacy lives on as a testament to human ingenuity and the pursuit of the impossible. Until next time, engineers.